Uh, I know, I know. Books? But this is a game dev channel. Game devs read visual novels and beam information directly into their brain using screens and video. What type of old people garbage is books? Well, I hear you. And let me tell you, without these, especially the third one, I would not be making games like this in Godot. But let's talk about the first book before we jump into that story. Book one, Mastery by Robert Greene. Check out my phone, dude, it's Mastery. Okay, this is the softest book on this list. Easy mode, if you will. The least practical, but the most fun to read. It's a philosophy book that talks about how to become a master of any craft, and it was the inspiration for the only tattoo I have. I was young and hated reading in college, but had dreams of being a synthwave producer, and I felt lost. A coworker named Max, shout out to you, Max, recommended audiobooks, and I thought that was super lame. But I plugged in Mastery upon his recommendation and I completely rewired my brain. It was like everything I wished I had learned in school all condensed into a few hour long audio journey. The narrator read it like an epic story and the author weaved tales of some of the greatest artists and craftsmen to ever walk the earth. I felt like I was learning how to make anything from the greatest of all time. It gave me the confidence and the mindset to learn any skill and practice tricks I could use for music, writing, editing, whatever. It's really good if you feel like you're lost in the creative path. The first chapter is called Discover Your Calling. And I know that sounds corny, but he doesn't preach that you should follow your passion. He sets out a path to mastery. He also talks about the evolving world and how the future is calling for multidisciplinary experts people who are the masters of many things. For instance, game dev YouTubers need to understand programming, design, marketing, writing, video editing, etc. Mastery helped me to manage the chaos that is being an artist in the 2020s and building a plan that I am still following now. If you feel you are lost and don't know where to start, this book is an excellent place to start. But book two is more concrete than book one. It teaches you about the wonderful magic of graphics programming. This is the Book of Shaders. It's a comprehensive online toy that teaches you how to make your games look like this. It's only a website, but that means it's completely free and it teaches you all about graphics programming. Boo! Boo! I know, some of you are like, yo, I'm not a nerd. Like I'm a nerd, but I'm not a nerd. I'm, I'm like the kind of nerd that likes to make platformers and not the kind of nerd that wants to know how my graphics card works. And I get it, okay? But hear me out. Take a look at this and this and this and this. And this, I totally just screwed myself over there because now I have to find six examples of awesome shaders that look cool and convince you that you should learn about shaders. <laughs> but I promise you, shaders are dope. All of what was just shown to you was not drawn or animated at all. It was programmed with things that you can learn from this book. The best part about it, besides the fact that it's free, is that you can play with it while you read it. The author gives interactive examples that you get to play with and learn with as you read it. And the first time I stumbled upon it, I spent about an hour messing with everything because I was just having fun. They're really visually stimulating and fun. Like you can just open this up to mess with and not even learn anything. Um, yeah, it's great. If you want to make cool stuff like local funk, or you just want to understand how your GPU makes fun images on the screen, this is the book for you. I did forget to mention though, that this teaches you the language that communicates directly to your graphics card. And the way that this language works is so fundamentally different than regular programming because each line applies to all the pixels on the screen at the exact same time. It's just a completely different way of thinking about programming and if you are the kind of nerd that I am, that might sound interesting to you. It's both intimidating and interesting, but I highly suggest that you give it a shot. 
The last book on this list is the book that I feel took me from a wannabe programmer to an actual programmer. And I will say, I'm not perfect by any means, and I still make spaghetti. But this book taught me how to think about programming in a much more organized and strategic way. Take a look. I know it looks lame, but I promise, as far as textbooks go, this is one of the best. Check out the back cover. This dude is a total goof. The whole book reads like a conversation with the dev just a few years ahead of you. It's less of a math textbook and more of a cool guy teaching you awesome things that make game development easier type book. Part of why I love it is because he makes reference to real genres that we still actively make today. Some other programming textbooks I've checked out from the past talk about types of games that we really don't even make anymore. So each pattern in this book can be directly applied to many genres that you might be interested in making. And uh, there are specialized patterns that you might be able to specifically apply to the exact genre that you're making right now. For instance, chapter two, the command pattern. I think Fire Emblem are into the breach. When playing games like this, you need to keep track of the events that happen. Move, attack, lose HP, gain an item, this list is kept track of because these games often have an undo or reverse button that allows you to step back in the list. You can probably hack together a system that can do this, but the patterns in this book have been optimized and battle tested in real games. So it's worth at least looking at them before you try to make your own system. That's kind of how I use it. If you've ever played a game and wondered how in the heck did they program that? The answer is probably in this book. I would recommend this book to those of you that feel comfortable with writing scripts, but have the constant feeling that you're doing it wrong. That's at least when I picked it up and now I don't really feel like I'm doing it wrong. But the caveat for this book, there's one caveat. All of the examples are written in C or C sharp. I can't remember exactly, but it's a, a brackets type of programming. And if you're a Godot dev like me, you are gonna have to do some translating. But since most programming languages are pretty similar, and if you are reading this book, you should be familiar enough with a language where you should be able to understand kind of what he's doing. He does explain what he's doing, and he acknowledges that it's in C and that you might need to translate it. And uh, all of the written instruction is really good, but just, just a caveat. Some of the examples might not directly translate to uh, the language that you are writing in. Honorable mentions here, two books. We got On Writing by Stephen King. This I referenced in my Devs Need to Play More Games video. And I think I even said it in that video, instead of On Writing, it could just say On Creating or On Developing. Because this is just a great book for if you're a creator, how do you do it? How do you have a system? How do you build an office that looks like that and makes you productive? And it's also just written by a guy who's really good at writing stories. And so this whole book is just like one big story. So if you like your nonfiction books to be a little bit more entertaining, this is solid. And I might even recommend this over mastery if you're just like trying to get started reading more. This is pretty entertaining. Just remember, instead of putting on writing, put on creating, everything applies. Secondly, get yourself a fiction book. Right now I'm reading low. This is the uh, this, this is the third volume. And uh, it's pretty dark, it's pretty messed up. It's about some ocean stuff. Uh, it's written by Rick Remender. I like it a lot. I'm reading a couple of different uh, graphic novels and a few fantasy books right now. Audible is your friend for, for uh, big novels, at least in my opinion. And I always find it helpful to read fantasy because as an artist, as a programmer, as a developer, you need to get inspired from lots of different places. I'm just as inspired by Stephen King and his process as I am by the art and the story of this book. So you never know what's gonna spark the right idea and the best thing you can do for yourself as any sort of creative person is to give yourself lots of inputs make a creative smoothie in your mind, get exposed to as many ideas and ways of thinking as you possibly can so you can make cool ideas. It's been a long time, but we did it. We got through the video, we showed the books. Hopefully now you know how to read some stuff that's gonna help you in the Godot sphere. Um, yeah, thanks again.
Peace.